Hi, I'm Mark Summerfield, author of Programming in Go, uh, a new book on the Go One programming language from Google. Uh, Go takes a very unusual approach to object orientation, uh, in particular with regarding constructing objects and accessing ob uh, object data. Uh, in C++ and Java, programmers are encouraged to keep their data private and to provide accessor methods, getters and setters, um, to make their code more robust and maintainable. And normally, the validation is done in constructors uh, and whenever a setter is used. Now, Go allows you to do pretty well the same thing. Okay. Um, but it's not usually done in Go because that isn't really Go style. The Go approach, um, for example, is to validate at the point of use, I lazy validation rather than eager validation. Um, Go doesn't have constructors, um, which means but what Go does do is it guarantees zero initialization of absolutely everything. There are no arcane rules like in C++. If you create a, a variable and you don't set it to a value, it will get the zero value, not some junk value. It will be the zero value. So uh, a null pointer, zero for an integer, empty string, and so on. And that applies to structures of your own data as well. So you know you always have a safe zero value. And it turns out that in most cases, the zero value is perfectly good for uh, constructing objects, which so you don't need constructors. But if that isn't, isn't satisfactory, you can always provide a construction function. And there are ways of making um, things private in Go so that what you can do is, is create a situation where it's only possible to get values of a particular type through a construction function. So you can control access that way. In terms of fields, uh, the the Go, Go can have private fields with public accessors, as is conventional in C++ and Java. But what's much more common is to have public fields. Now, of course, that raises the question, um, two issues, really, efficiency and maintainability. Uh, obviously, it's much more efficient just accessing the data directly. Um, but if you do want validation and you don't want to do that and you you don't want to do that uh, lazily i.e. at the time of use you want to do it eagerly then you can provide public uh, uh, functions that do validate and private ones that don't and use a combination of those for efficiency uh, regarding maintainability the usual issue is that you want to add a new field or a new method now if you're adding a new field um the conventional way in Go is not to extend an existing type, but to create a new type which either aggregates or embeds. Um, in, in Go speak, embedding is like delegation in some other languages. So what this means is all, all your code continues to run with the old original type, but you've now got a new type with new data in it in addition to the old data. And so you can migrate to this new type uh, rel rather painlessly. And it's very easy to set up conversion functions between the new and old types. So that's a, a, an approach to, to adding data. In terms of adding methods, it's even easier. You just create the new methods on an, any existing type that you like, and they're there. Um, they, there's no inheritance hierarchy to upset because there is no inheritance. So it's very easy to extend and, and maintain uh, custom types in Go, but it but you have to think in a different way. You can do things the way you've done them in Java and C++, but normally you wouldn't. You would do them in the Go way, uh, which is different and, and quite interesting if you're not used to it.